What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today. And this is going to be my setup that I'm going to be using throughout 2023. I'm sure I might make a tweak here and there by a number or so. Um, but if you're new to the game or if you're just struggling for what to use at the moment, this is going to be a very, very solid base for you. I feel like it's quite stable in, as, as things go. And I'm going to go through every single setting, like slide by slide, tab by tab. And then I'll show you my camera settings at the end as well and graphic settings. And then at the very, very end, I've got my max HUD settings as well, which is the overlay to see all the various informations on screen and I will put a link to download that in the description also for your convenience. I'll also put down below all of my reshade settings and my sound mods etc just so you can replicate everything that you need to. Hope you enjoy the video and find it useful. Right so let's go through each one of these tabs one by one starting off on the input tab. So for lean I've got it on my left stick from left to right as normal. My throttle is right trigger. My brake, this is combined brakes by the way, this is left trigger, this is front and left brake combined. Rear brake by itself is L1 for me on the PlayStation controller. My clutch is circle, hasn't really got to be an easy to find button, I only use it off the starts. Um, rider front and back lean is on the right stick up and down and same with left and right lean is side to side. The rider lean tracking I have got as disabled, direct lean I've got as faulty. Combined brakes I've got on yes, again this helps me with my left trigger, doing them both at the same time. My minimum braking is on 10 and my maximum is on 100. This just prevents me from locking up a bit more. You can make this higher and you can see in the bottom right here, this, this little uh, line that shows you how much your brakes are applied goes up and up and up. I keep that on 100 just to keep me in, in shape a little bit more when I'm braking. Moving over to the right down here on lean, I've got a dead zone of three. This just stops me having any sort of like stick drift if my, uh, my sticks are just somewhat out of line. Uh, linearity is 150. I have smooth ticked, which is better for people playing on a controller rather than keyboard and mouse. My press is 60, release is 60, and gain is 91. If you want to ask me what each and every one of these do, don't bother. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just going off of what feels good. Uh, next drop down, we've got the throttle. Dead zone 0, linear to 100, no smooth, 0, 0, 100. And then going to breaks, we have got 0, 100, smooth on, 30, 10, 84.7. Rear brake, 0, 100, smooth, 30, 10, 88.3. Clutch is 0, 100, smooth, 50, 5, 100. The rider front and back lean dead zone I've got at 10, linearity I've got at 100, smoothing is on, my press is 80, my release is 80 and my gain is 100 and then exactly the same for left and right, 10, 100, smooth, 80, 80, 100. Feel free to go and pause that at any point and input these exactly as you see them. Moving over to input number two, my shift up button I've got as triangle on the controller. Bearing in mind that I play claw, so you might want to mix and match these buttons depending on how you hold your controller. My shift down is square on my controller. Uh, starter doesn't matter in this game. I've got auto clutch enabled, so my bike will never stall by itself. You Again, if you are a more hardcore player and you have that assist off, you can change that as you wish. Push bike forwards and backwards I've got on my D-pad. I just find this really easy to reach for if I crash and need to move my person forwards and back. And it, it makes sense in terms of buttons. My sit button is clicking down my right stick. Now I have this box here marked as direct. So that means that anytime I'm not clicking down this right stick, my rider is stood up. Anytime I'm holding down right stick, my rider is sat down. A lot of people have it on a toggle basis. So if I turn this off and I click click right stick, I'll stay sat down. If I click again, I'll stay stood up. But I just prefer having it on a like an, a manual basis rather than having to click it down once. Uh, dab doesn't really matter at all. I've, I've never messed with dab whatsoever. Reset uh, to uh, reset to the track. I've got as my share button on the PlayStation controller. Uh, track marker. I have got again. Oh, 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 it's not even showing up on my controller over there. It's very weird. But I've got the options one just to the right, uh, just to the right of the touchpad here. So uh, change view I've got on my keyboard. You don't need it on controller at all. There's no need for it. And very rarely do I do I mix and match things. Uh, look back I've got as my touchpad. I feel like I was running out of buttons at that point. But I do like being able to look back, especially in Supercross. I find that if you're jumping into a corner close to somebody, it's nice seeing just where they are. Heading. This is turning your head left and right whilst you're on the track. And I've got that again on the D-pad with buttons that I feel make the most sense. 
tear off. I click down the left stick, nice and easy to reach whilst you're playing. And then raise arm, I've got as R1 on the PlayStation controller. And the reason I have this one over any of the other gestures right there is solely to say thank you to like if you're passing lappers or to say sorry if you've accidentally wiped someone out. And then finally, just for the memes, I have an extra button. I put trick on X just so I can throw taunts and at people when you pass them as well, just to be that guy. <laughs> Moving on to input number three, this is all replay stuff. Feel free to customize this as you seem appropriate. Uh, I just got a few things on here set to my controller so I can fly around without using my keyboard and mouse when I'm in replay mode. Over to the graphic settings. I have everything maxed out as much as possible, although I've just realized my anti-aliasing is off. Let me bump that back up. That must have been for a video. Uh, it, little top tip, by the way, if you are struggling in terms of... Uh, lag and fps and stuff one of the biggest changes you can make is to the anti-aliasing so even the difference between like 4 and 16 is barely noticeable so if you want to bump it down or of course turn it all the way off if you want to as well everything else for me is maxed out i play in 2k uh i got 165 hertz uh, refresh rate monitor and then i try running everything as high as possible i leave track screens off because track screens do cause quite a lot of lag uh, not every track has it, but if you've played Assen, for example, there's a track screen on there, which is a really good example. You can see kind of what everyone's doing on the track whilst you're riding around. So I just have that turned off. Again, 3D Grass is another example of this. Uh, everything else I have maxed out and higher. Miscellaneous stuff. These, this is all personal preference. Feel free to do with this what you want. Only recommendation I can make is over here at the top right for bandwidth. I have this as very high. Um, servers will choose your bandwidth for you majority of the time. But if that isn't the case, having your bandwidth on very high means that you can see people further away. Of course, if you've got a lower end PC, then you can change this down to medium or low. So once people get a certain distance from you, they will disappear off your screen. So you haven't got to be loading them in. But I keep that on very high. My computer is more than capable. And then of course, I've got the correct date format. <coughs> UK <laughs> down here and then I've got uh, UK units and actually no idea what this whole skip intro thing is I had no idea there was an intro but oh well and disable chat because I don't want any um, children that don't know how to communicate properly popping up in my videos um, and then finally over to the simulation tab my field of view for first person is 110 0 31 that, uh, that's basically what I've ran since I've been playing first person for the last year and a half or so going on two years uh, these don't matter at all because uh, I've not got them selected, but I don't have free look on. I don't have corner anticipation on. Uh, no lot to bike. Show HUDs can do, but I've got, I use max HUD plugin as well. And then I occasionally do the rider stand just for people watching the video. Uh, but for the most part, when I'm playing on my own, I have that turned off just because I think it's cleaner. I don't like having too much stuff on the screen. And then my third person view, if you want to copy it for whatever reason, is 41, 46, 0, and then everything turned off at the top. Riding aids. I, I think I run a few more than most people, uh, at least more than the hardcore people. Automatic tyre changes, just when you go to the pits, it puts on fresh tyres for you, so you've not got to worry about it or press any buttons. Brake help really stops you locking up super hard, and this is probably the one that I get the most... Uh, most stick for uh, i think a lot of people don't like that but i'm so heavy-handed when it comes to my left trigger the right one i'm absolutely fine with but left i do need a bit of help and then automatic clutch means you can pull away with just right trigger without holding the clutch down at all which i i think is helpful especially with how powerful the traction is on the 450s nowadays i feel like if you use the clutch off the gate you're going to backflip all the time so usually i just like rolling on the throttle instead and then shift help just means i don't have to hold in the clutch while i'm shifting and that is a habit this stemmed from me for when playing MX Simulator. You just get to spam up and down the gears without having to press any other buttons. If I go to the track real quick, I can show you exactly what my first person camera looks like. Now, one thing that you want to do is on your keyboard, if you hold down shift and the letter C, you'll see it says CH just on my bar pad. Then with the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can move it forwards and backwards to your desire. I have that all the way backwards. If I press shift and C again, I can do the same thing but vertically and I go all the way down and that gives me just I can see more I can see more of the bike I feel like I can see more around me and it just kind of gives the illusion of a higher FOV without having things whizzing past you quite as fast and then if you wanted to see my third person settings how they look in game it looks just like this and I, I do play first person primarily I might switch into third person every now and then if I want to over to like a free ride map and get a little bit sideways um, but that is that for the most part if I go to if I press caps lock 
I have Max Hub downloaded, which I can link for you in the description. I think everybody should use this. It helps so, so much and gives you all the information you need. And you can customize all of this to your heart's desire. Now, there's a few things I always have on the screen. Uh, if I go from top to bottom, I have my fuel on, so I can know how much fuel I've got left while riding around. Um, I have on, which is the next one I have on, I have the map. Uh, I like being able to see the full map rather than just part of it so I can see where everyone's at at different times. Helps a lot in races. Uh, if you crash and come off the track, you can see if people are coming before you blindly rejoin and wipe everybody out. I like to have my speed just to use my gears because I don't have this uh, this manual gears one on. Oh, you can't see that over the controller overlay. Let me move that out of the way. There we go. Uh, so I've got that little gear one there as well. Uh, the reason I've got it slightly high up is because if you run like a black gear in first person, your arms cover it so you can't see it. So I've got it a little bit higher so you can see. Uh, standings, very important. And I do it so I can see just the gap to and from the, the people around, know where I am during the race. And then finally, I have timing up here as well, which keeps track of your lap times. All of this fully customized. Well, you can put all sorts of weird and random stuff on. You can see what your lean angle is. Um, you can see what can, buttons you're input in any given time. You can have a radar to see where people are around you. So feel free to download this from the description and just mess around with it uh, as, as you desire, really. And that is it for all of my setup that I'm going to be using for the 2023 Supercross season. In terms of bike, I'm unsure just yet, and that is the sole reason that I'm not doing anything suspension-wise in this video. Uh, if those of you are unaware, suspension does change from bike to bike. It's not like you can blindly copy uh, suspension from one bike to the other and it handled the same it's just not the case all the different bikes have different geometries and suspensions that are unique to themselves uh, i'm not sure on which bike i'm going to be using uh, that is another key factor in it uh, and then finally I, I feel like within the first month or so in the supercross season i'll probably be doing a lot of tweaking so this I, I may revisit that at a later point but i hope you found this video useful let me know and uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you are new i'd really really appreciate it have a lovely new year guys i hope you stick to all those new year's resolutions this time round not not like the last couple of years where you've done them for the first two months and then slacked off and thank you for all the support recently i really really appreciated it i'll catch you guys next time peace <laughs>